Okay, in this video I'll be working through question 3 of the level 3 2016 um, mechanics exam. Right, question 3, simple harmonic motion. Toy Bumblebee hangs on a spring suspended from the ceiling in the laboratory. Tom pulls Bumblebee down 10 centimeters below the equilibrium and re releases it. The Bumblebee moves in simple harmonic motion state. The con two conditions necessary for simple harmonic motion to occur. So, sort of two ways to go about this. First off, you could just memorize the two conditions. There's really only one that it's got. I know, you could break it up into, into two components. Um, the force has to be proportional to displacement, that is like the main condition, um, and it's assumed that the force acts in the opposite direction of displacement. It's, it's part of, I suppose, a definition. Uh, it's, it's more of an assumption than anything else, because um, it doesn't make sense for it. There's no, I can't think of any sort of examples. Oh, maybe magnets, if they're reverse poles, so north on north, I suppose it would be opposite, um, but then you could still get simple harmonic motion with that as well. So it's yeah. Let's just write it down. So force is proportional, proportional to displacement. And when I say that, I mean they're linearly proportional. So if I increase one by you know, if I, if I scale it, if I increase one by ten, the other one's, the other one's going to increase by a, a scaled amount. It's going to, it's it's not. So they're linearly proportional. They're not um, quadratically proportional or something like that. Yeah, otherwise, it wouldn't be um, it's SHM. And force x in opposite direction. Direction. Ugh, where is it? Two displacement. And if you write the formula for a spring, so force equals minus kx, we can sort of see, um, we can say that k is just a constant, so we have force is roughly proportional to the displacement, and the negative there is to show that the force um, acts in the opposite direction to the displacement. So if you pull, if you pull Mr. Bumblebee down, so if you pull the displacement down, um, you're going to have a force acting in the other direction in order to pull him back to the center. So it's it's always wanting to go back to the. It's always wanting the bumblebee always wants to go back to equilibrium. It doesn't want to. It tends to. Inanimate objects don't want. Right. The bumblebee's oscillation has a period of 1.57 seconds. Um, calculate the bumblebee's acceleration at time 0.25 seconds after Tom releases the bumblebee from the lowest point. So if you jump onto your formula sheet, you'll find that and this is this isn't the angular acceleration. We're just looking for the regular acceleration. So the acceleration of the bumblebee a is equal to minus the amplitude times the angular velocity squared times cos theta. Right. So. What do we have? We have the period. We've got the period. We've got t, um, but we'll probably we got a. So right, we've got a equals. It's given us in centimeters. In centimeters, always write it in meters. It's probably just there to stump you. So that's 0 0.100 of a meter. Notice my 3sf because I've given it here in 3sf. So it's 0 0.100 of a meter. That's a done. Um, Angular velocity, how can we possibly calculate that? So I know angular velocity equals, this is in the formula sheet as well, 2 pi times the frequency. And the frequency, just right up here, is equal to 1 over the period. So I'm going to substitute in the frequency is 1 over the period, so I'm going to cross that out, to scribble that out, divided by t. There we go. So we can work that out. Um, if you plug that into a calculator, so 2 pi divided by what is the period? 1.57, that gives you 4 point, I've rounded this up to 3 SF radians a second minus 1, but if you're doing the exam, probably shouldn't round to 3 SF straight away, keep it saved on your calculator as all the SF you want, and just use it and just continue it through the calculation. Right, so we've got angular, angular velocity, 
we've got the amplitude. I think we've got all we need, but we don't have the angular displacement. But if you just remember from normal distance equals velocity times time, angular distance equals angular velocity times time. Right, we've got the angular velocity, and it's finding us the acceleration after 0.25. So that's our time. So we've got everything we need. All we need to do is substitute in. Right, so let's do that now. A equals minus A, or minus the amplitude, I'm missing square cos uh, angular velocity times time. That is very, very messy. I, I've missed out my way angular velocity, but there we go. Equals minus 0 0.100 times 4.00 squared cos bracket 4.00 times the time, so it's after a certain amount of time, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. If you crunch that into your calculator, it'll give you 0 point minus 0 0.864, and it's a regular, normal, just linear acceleration, meters per second minus 2, or meters divided by second squared. And that seems reasonable enough. Right. Tom pushes the toy bumblebee with a very small force at regular intervals of time, um, so that eventually is moved, moving up and down with very large amplitude. State the name of this phenomenon. Phenomenon. Explain how the bee's motion develops a very large amplitude. Um, so it's called a resonance. Resonance. Um, resonance. Um, so. Explain how the bumblebee's motion develops a very large amplitude. So, for starters, Tom, so you got to explain what, yeah, what it is. So, I've named it. Um, Tom must. This is how he gets to. This is how he's going to develop a very large amplitude. Push the B at the natural frequency. C of the setup. Um, what is the natural frequency, you ask? So I'll probably write that as well. The natural frequency C is the frequency at which it normally oscillates at the frequency. Frequency is free. B will yeah. right. Explain how the so have I answered it? The yeah, resonance. Thomas pushed the B at the natural reason fre uh, natural frequency of the setup. The natural frequency is the frequency which B will oscillate at every every push will add to the amplitude until uh, um, well until um, forces uh, balanced due to friction and stuff balanced that's not very good to to friction slash heat losses slash it breaks uh, key component here it breaks um, there's a nice wee YouTube video called the Tacoma Bridge it's, I'm sure you've seen it before it's probably one of the most famous examples of re resonance um, when blowing down a gully or blowing down a ravine I suppose the river below it um, oscillated the bridge at its natural frequency until it broke. Uh, another example of this is a what's called a Barton's pendulum. You have two pendulums hung on a string um, of the same length. You swing one, the other one swings as well. Um, well that's another example of resonance. Oh, I can't think of any off the top of my head at the moment, but yeah, there's lots of examples you just chuck into YouTube. Um, 
yeah, but that's the oh, wine glass breaking. Wine glass breaking is probably one of the most prime examples of resonance. Um, it's sort of hard to do if you ever use a speaker. You need to funnel the sounds. You need to chuck a box over the top like that there. So you have a tiny wee hole so it funnels it. Anyway, resonance. Here we go. So Tom stops pushing the bumblebee when its displacement is 20 centimeters. Using the axis given below, draw a graph of the displacement against time for three complete oscillations starting from y equals positive 20 centimeters. Include appropriate values on both axes. Right, so first and foremost, it starts from positive 20 centimeters. I'll write my scale on here, 20 centimeters. And I'll just put negative 20 centimeters down here, negative 20 centimeters. And I'll make this t equals one or 1.5 seconds seven seconds this is going to be 2t this is going to be 3t surely if the examiner was reading this it would make sense for them um, but we have a little bit of a problem it doesn't say anything about damping or friction or anything it doesn't say whether it's ignoring friction or whether um, to include friction so there are two ways you can go about answering this question you can include damping or you cannot include damping so i'll do with it so i'm gonna write assuming no friction no friction slash damping so this is the first one's gonna be so we're starting from positive 20 centimeters so that means i'm gonna start from here i'm gonna draw a nice sign graph and above here so i'm gonna make where it's going to end again. So that's one full cycle from here. No, it's not. That's one full cycle here. It needs to cut through the axis here. It needs to cut through so I'll cross it out. So through here. Yeah. Oh no, I'm going to down to the 20 centimeters. This is very messy. Down to the 20 centimeters. Up. Right, that's one full cycle. So I've gone from positive 20 centimeters down to the negative 20 centimeters, back up and back to where I started here. And I need to do that again. So I'm going to cut through the axis here and back up through the axis here. I'm going to finish up here because that's all. I'm going to go down a bit, I suppose. I'm going to go down. Try and be as neat as you possibly can. Up. That is two cycles. If you're doing this, you sh I should really be using a ruler, um, but I just haven't, but it's enough. Um, and then one more cycle, so I'm going to cut through the axis here, cut through the axis here. And we go down, all the way down to minus 20, all the way up, to positive 3. So that is with no damping whatsoever. If you wanted to add damping in, we'll do that down here. So we're gonna, I'm going to do it roughly 20 centimetres. Minus 20 centimeters. This is I'm put T. I'm gonna put 2T. You should really have the numbers that I had up there. 3T. Start from 20 centimeters, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut through here. So down. Make it a little less. Oh, should be cutting through the center there. And so I'm back to there. That's where I want to cut through. That's when I cut. So the amplitude decreases, but it doesn't change your frequency. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't change your period. Period frequency inversely related. Um, so it still needs to cut through the axis at the same places. Cuts through there. Make it a lot smaller. Cuts through there. Back to here. And one more it needs to cut through the center there. I'll make it tiny, tiny, tiny now. There we go. So that would be if there was damping involved or friction or whatever you want to call it. So as you can see, the amplitude gets smaller as you go along and it should really be exponential. So if you drew a graph like that there, normally dampening is, is like an exponential function once you map, if you map it on. Um, but yeah, so these are both right because they haven't said you can't do it otherwise. But yeah. Probably in the future, whoever's writing these questions might be an idea to say, draw if there's damping or something like that there. Here we go, done.